Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name's Vin PF, and on today's episode, we're going to be doing another Sample Saturday. If you're not sure what I'm talking about when I'm talking about Sample Saturdays, occasionally I'm going to be doing these videos on a Saturday where I cover some samples that I've picked up from various different things like subscription services, PR samples, tasting boxes, things like that, uh, banding them together in some kind of theme, usually the distillery or some such. Today we've got the lakes, but not only just the lakes, it's the Whiskey Makers Reserves 1, 2 and 3. Now, unfortunately all of these have already been sold out. I've actually been holding on to these samples for so long now that they've already gone. Um, for instance, these two here were bottled in 2019, this one was bottled in 2020. Just the nature of uh, what I've been going through over the last year, if you haven't caught up, I've had a baby last year, so it's it's been a pretty intense year for me. In any case, I'm going to be covering stuff like this and more things, so yeah, make sure you keep it dialed on the subscribe button and whatnot to keep up with those videos on top of the normal reviews. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got some lakes stuff here today. I'm going to go through all three of these and see what the differences are and the similarities because they're all in the same kind of vein. Um, obviously, the Lakes Distillery is an English distillery. It's a pretty good distillery, actually. It's a pretty cool place to go to, one of the few that I've been to, so do go check them out. Uh, they got themselves a uh, whiskey maker from Macallan, and that's Darvel Gandhi, and he's kind of really turned them around, I have to say. Now, um, I don't think it's too cruel to say that the whiskey that they were putting out originally was lacking something for me. It was um, kind of it was mimicking almost um, standard release scotch, you know, that kind of um, low 40s, uh, relatively cheap whiskey to produce. But I have to say that um, I didn't vibe off it too much, but uh, I thought they needed to be kind of standing out a little bit more. Hence, we now have stuff like this. You know, and Darvel's doing amazing things there now. He's really turned around their flavour profiles and um, creating some incredible stuff. So these ones here are kind of like little plays around. You know, they're they're kind of they say it's like an exploration of kind of wood and blending, oak and blending, that kind of thing. We're talking about a lot of sherry influence here. So if you're interested in sherry, this is a kind of series to check out. Each one of these is around sixty-five pounds. Of course, it's fairly young whiskey, but. As you know, if you've been watching my channel for any length of time, that doesn't tend to bother me if the liquid is good, especially this um, kind of, you know, when you're making fancy casks, STR casks and things like that. I don't think these are STR, but there's definitely some red wine stuff going on here. We're going to start over this side here at the number one, move over to number three, talk about each one in turn uh, and, um, and kind of just go from there. Like As I've mentioned a lot on these videos, these are more long form videos and uh, less editing for me. So I'm just going to kind of leave in the kind of ums and ahs and things like that just how it is. Let's get into the first one then and see what we've got. Now, I'll hold these up to the camera each time as well. So this is the number one. There you are. Uh, and this is a 60.6%. .6 this is a cask strength. Worth noting, because these first two are cask strength and this one is not, but it's 54%. It's not exactly a low ABV. You know, um, it's all like natural kind of non-chill filtered, I believe. Have a look at the colour on that. It's not too bad. I mean, like I said, there's only so many years these things can be. We don't know an age statement, but the Lakes Distillery's not been around so long as to produce, you know, like a 20-year-old whiskey or something like that. So this first one has got some uh, PX, X, XPX cask and X red wine casks in it. Um, it's uh, different to the other ones because this one here has some PX, some red wine and some bourbon. Uh, and this one is more sherry focused. It's like um, PX, Oloroso, cream sherry. Uh, and I want to say also the red wine. <sighs> yeah, I think so. I think they've all got red wine. I think, did I say red wine for this one? If I didn't, I should have. This one's got some red wine casks in it as well. So let's get onto the nose on this and see what we've got. I'm going to be cleansing in between each one as well because uh, these are heavy drams. Oh, so as you know, if you're a fan of the show, uh, I'm um, I'm not a huge fan of sherry whiskey, I have to say, because I'm a little bit scared of that kind of um, sulfuriness that sometimes comes out of it. But please do report that at least on this one, no sulfur. We'll go through each one in turn. In fact, I may as well just say it now. None of these have got any sulfur in them. This one's got a kind of very oaky. It's the sherry, the dried fruits. And for me, it's almost like a treacly vibe to it. It's a really nice nose, actually. Really nice nose. The the it's strong ABV for sure. Obviously, I'm getting my hooter right in here, but I don't recommend that for most people. I'm a I'm a big fan of um, car strength whiskey, so I'm well used to the smells of car strength whiskey now. So, but if if you're not so used to it or don't like those higher ABVs, then you know 
do be careful when you're smelling. You're likely to lose some nose hairs. In any case, let's get onto the palette. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is some serious ABV. Jeez, it's um got bags of flavour with it along though. It's um more of those oaky elements, those dried fruits that we you know that's going to come up a lot in this tasting. A lot of those sherry dried fruits. When I'm talking about that, I'm talking about raisins, sultanas, that kind of thing. But on top of that, it's kind of like a chocolatey vibe to it. And then almost like a spicy, gingery flavour to it. Mm. I have to say, this is this one here is exceptional whiskey. Um, I, I had tried this when I first got the sample. Not too much of it. Um, it has been sitting around for a little bit, but... Um, Absolutely fantastic whiskey. Really impressed with that one. And I was a bit glad I didn't pick up a bottle of it at the time. It's just one of those things I have to be careful about what bottles I buy, and it just passed me by, unfortunately. Important to cleanse in between each one. Um, obviously, there's a variety of different ways you can do it. Personally, because I'm on camera, um, I tend to just use water. It's a bit easier than me kind of munching away at something. But um, I have to say as well, you know, if you watch the channel and you're interested in the kind of behind the scenes sort of stuff like that, I tend to make a lot of notes about these beforehand. This isn't the first time I'm trying these whiskies. Uh, so um, me kind of cleansing on screen is a bit more of a kind of showy thing. I could just go through this and give you my tasting notes. But um, some people don't believe that I'm uh, I'm cleansing in between each one. But, you know, I do. When I'm cleansing off screen, it tends to be mostly water again as well. But I also use coffee beans for my nose and things like that. It's a really good resetter. But you can use like oat cakes and crackers like only plain only plain crackers okay so the next one let's show the bottle first before i pick up the glass the whiskey makers number two this one's also cast strength and this is 60.9 um hopefully i said 60.6 .6 and 60.9 on the last time but this is 60.9 this time uh, and as i mentioned earlier this one's got um, more px more red wine but also the addition of ex bourbon casks in there as well so, you know, we should be expecting some sort of difference. Let's try on the nose. Now, I have to say, um, I was a bit disappointed by this one. So, sure, I'm getting those kind of those sherry notes there as well. Those dried fruits. But for me, I'm getting this kind of acetone nose from it. It's not it's not an in-your-face acetone. If you've been anywhere near some acetone, um, I have, I'm a... Uh, a technical guy in my day job and I work a lot with pure acetone it isn't as strong as that you know if um, if you know anybody who d uh, puts acrylic on their nails or anything like that you'll know what the smell of acetone is like because they have to use that to get it off um, it isn't as strong as that it isn't as, as bad as that but I have to say as well although I'm getting that flavour I actually do quite like the smell of acetone it isn't a bad flavour at all it's just a bit of an odd one to get when this one is so lovely and fruity this one, for me, is coming through a little chemically, which seems a shame. It's definitely more understated than the previous one. This one come across as fruity and uh, kind of sherry-led, and there's honey notes to it. But for me, this is much more understated and a little bit more boring. Let's try on the palette. Mm. Now, you'll be glad to know it doesn't taste like acetone. Please don't try acetone. It's uh, not good for you. It doesn't taste like that at all. It does taste lovely, actually, this one. More spicy oak. Not getting those kind of gingery elements that I got from the first one. Not getting that kind of luscious chocolatey nut uh, from it as well. But I'm kind of getting those oaky notes through, those dried fruits coming through. It is very drying on the back end. Isn't a bad whiskey. Um, not a huge fan of the nose, I have to say, which is a shame because um, although the, the whiskey itself is lovely, Side by side with the first one, it doesn't really hold up, in my opinion. I think coming at this one fresh, it might be just fine. I think I'd be happy to spend that money on that. But, you know, side by side, not a fan of the second one. Mm, another fresh cleanse. Okay, so we're moving on to the third one now. This is the one that's um, got some serious sherry influence. PX casks, Oloroso casks. Cream sherry, not sure how that works. Maybe it's a kind of like a seasoned 
oak, whatever, and some X red wine barrels as well. Now this one isn't cast strength, it's 54%. Still the same price as the other ones, but um, I don't think that should bother you too much. It's, yeah, you could feel stiffed about your, uh, the ABV on this one, but I think the extra attention to the cask choices should kind of kind of pay heed to that. But obviously, you need to be a fan of sherry whiskey for this one, because this is a, I'm gonna say it, this is the sherry bomb one. On the nose, it's not even the kind of dry fruits, this is juicy fruits. Huge sherry element to it, loads of vanillas, loads of honeys. It's a big, bold, big, bold nose. And I'm enjoying it as well. You can get your nose even in further because of the lower ABV. Still a high ABV, please do be careful. Onto the palate then. Mm. Now, straight away, obviously you're not getting this huge ABV hit, although it is still high. And more of that's coming across from the nose, this kind of juicy fruits rather than the dried fruits. It's not drying on the back end. It's definitely spicy still. I'm not getting this kind of gingery elements to it, but it's more of like a kind of a cinnamony, maybe even a nutmeggy kind of spice. Mm. Yeah, I really like that. That's a good one. I mean, they're all good. I have to say, they're all good. Um, it, the the nose spoils the second one for me. That's a clear last place. And then I have to say, I can't I can't decide between these two. In fact, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something a bit naughty now. I'll have one final little cleanse here, but I'm going to try both of these side by side. No cleansing, see what we get. And just to be fair about it, I'm going to try the lower ABV one first. You saw how I picked them up there. Bit weird, I don't know why I did that. Let's just change hands so that it looks more like <laughs> that. Okay, so lower ABV one first. This is a good way of trying jam side by side to see what flavors are muted out by the previous one. And you can open up some different flavors. It's a nice little trick, you should try it. Oh, yeah, okay. Now for me, the ABV just wins it. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Obviously I really like high strength whiskey. You can add water to these. I'm not gonna do that today. Um, because I have to say, it, when I was trying these off camera, I didn't find it added anything to the experience. But the key thing is that you can add water to this and produce something similar to this. Different cast choices, sure, less sherry elements. But really, for my recommendations to you, if you are able to pick these up at all, they might still be available on different vendors, Master Remote and whatnot, didn't check. But um, if you want your sherry bomb, then this one's probably the one to go to. And if you want like your high ABV that you can do whatever you want with, this one's your go-to. Not not a huge fan of this one. Couldn't recommend it for the price uh, when you've got the other two available. But still okay, still okay. If you're collecting the set, then you're probably not going to miss it anyway. But hopefully, that's give you a bit of an idea about what they're doing. I'm not sure if they're going to do any more of these. I think kind of COVID and stuff like that has halted productions and, and putting bottles out. Hopefully, they're going to carry on with this because the idea is to do a big series of it. But let me know if you've tried these below. Did you get similar notes to me? I'm very interested to know if anyone else got the kind of chemically notes on this because I have to say, I remember trying this a couple of years ago at a festival and whatnot and not getting that, but maybe that was just the day I was having then versus the day I'm having now. Very interested to hear your thoughts. If you've tried any of these, have you got all three? Are you going to be looking at them anymore? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again on more No Nonsense Whiskey videos. I'm going to be doing these kind of rare occasional videos where I to cover some samples that I've received very, very... No, I'm just going to start again. Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey.